Welcome to Vase's webinar with Choice Hotels. Today, we'll get the opportunity to hear directly from Choice Hotels VP of Engineering, Jason Simpson. Jason will discuss his strategy to secure data at Choice Hotels and share why shifting to an identity-first security solution was key to advancing their strategy in a multi-cloud environment. First, let's get started with introductions. Jason Simpson is currently the VP of Engineering at Choice Hotels and has more than 25 years of industry experience and has held leadership positions at startups, GoDaddy, and was a Chief Technology Officer for the state of Arizona. Mike Bartholomew leads customer success for Vesa. He's in his 25th year of helping customers solve complex technical, business, and strategic problems. He's been focused on identity and security for the past 10 years. And my name is Monica Armand, and I'm on the product marketing team at Vesa. I'm going to discuss the challenges that organizations face today to manage cloud data permissions and Vesa's identity first solution to help customers solve this challenge. And then we'll get into the discussion with Jason to learn how he approaches securing data at Choice Hotels. We have conversations every day with organizations who are facing the same challenges as Choice Hotels. Security and IT leaders need better ways to identify and eliminate cybersecurity risks tied to the enforcement of least privilege access, resource entitlement reviews, and data governance. This has become a very common challenge as modern enterprise cloud adoption has made hybrid and multi-cloud ecosystems the standard. Also, the definition of identity has evolved and is no longer limited to internal employees. Organizations need to manage external accounts like partners and contractors, or like Choice Hotels franchisees. Non-human accounts like bots and service accounts are also part of your identity footprint. Adding to the complexity are the permissions each of these identities have in each system and application. Not keeping pace with managing permissions and enforcing the best practice of least privilege can quickly become a major security risk. This calls for a new strategy to secure data and tools to do this more effectively. Legacy tools make it difficult to manage entitlements across all systems and applications. Current solutions relying on authentication leave data at risk as it does not help organizations to manage and understand what data users have access to and what they can do with that access. They give siloed views as it's difficult to map identity to data relationships across identity providers and data systems. And they lack visibility into effective permissions so you don't know people's cumulative access across systems and applications. And as seen on the screenshot on the right-hand side, when there's no standardization and permissions across applications, it can one, be confusing for non-experts to understand what permissions truly mean, and two, hard to map permissions models to each other. Permissions can mean different things in different systems. With VESA, all this information is mapped into one authorization graph. The authorization graph produces a single comprehensive view of effective permissions detailing exactly which users can create, read, update, delete on which data. This is what permissions look like in VESA. You get an end-to-end -end view of who can and should take what action on what data. This is a foundation that VESA is built on, breaking down disparate authorization structures across solutions and enabling security, IT, and data teams to confidently answer data access questions. Our platform pulls authorization metadata from identity providers, SaaS applications, cloud IAM solutions, and custom applications. With comprehensive visibility into identity to data relationships, you can do things like manage Azure AD user entitlements on sensitive Snowflake data, or quickly search for all identities with delete permissions on your GitHub repos. Vesa is proud to work with world-class organizations like Choice Hotels to use the power of authorization to secure data. Now I'll let Mike and Jason get into their conversation on Choice Hotels journey with Vesa and hear how they are using Vesa to advance their security strategy for their multi-cloud environment. On to you, Mike. Choice Hotels came to Vesa looking for a better way to clean up permissions in the cloud and get more visibility into identity to data relationships between Okta and AWS. As an early adopter of cloud, Choice Hotels had already rebuilt its central reservation system in AWS using a microservices architecture and needed a way to manage and control data in a cloud environment to ensure that only the right people got into the right data and apps meant for them. With Vesa, 
Choice is able to be more proactive with securing their data and not only able to remediate issues quickly, but also has the ability to identify and fix aspects uh, of their infosec, infosec environment that they were not visible before. At this point, I wanna welcome Jason Simpson from Choice Hotels. J Jason is the VP of Engineering at Choice. Jason, welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. You bet, always happy to talk about our cloud journey and identity. Thanks, Jason. So you and I have a uh, have a shared interest in travel. Uh, for you, it's both personal and professional. Um, just to kick things off, uh, tell me about your favorite travel destination. Actually, I should ask, tell me about your second favorite travel destination, because I know you have a destination so much that you won't tell anybody about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to uh, let anybody know where to go. So uh, my second favorite is Maui. I love Maui. Any of the Hawaiian Islands are fantastic, but Maui is probably my favorite. That's awesome. Jason, um, just tell us a little bit about your background, your career, and how, how that journey led you to Choice Hotels. Got it. Yeah, I was a uh, software engineer for, by trade, learned uh, how to write code and do that thing for a long time, and then eventually transitioned to leadership at uh, GoDaddy. And I spent many years there kind of helping build that company up, uh, then transitioned to a CTO for the whole state of Arizona, which was a pretty enjoyable uh, job, and then which eventually led me here to Choice, where I've been uh, here almost four years. So, Jason, Choice is an innovative company and an early adopter of new technologies. You were early to migrate to the cloud, and you now have a multi cloud environment. Choice Hotels has a massive footprint 13 distinct brands with over 7,100 locations around the globe. This can obviously make a data migration strategy very complex and difficult to manage. Can you tell us about your cloud transformation and migration to AWS? Why is keeping data in the cloud so secure so important to choice? Yeah, I um, really the whole you know migration to the cloud started in 2015, 2016 timeframe when we basically rebuilt our uh, central reservation system. So that thing is 100% running in the cloud today. Um, we're probably, we might be the only company in the world uh, at our scale that could, that could say that from a hospitality perspective. Um, and when you put all that data and everything up in AWS, right, or anywhere, you want to make sure it's secure. So um, over the years, we've found better ways to do that, but uh, it was still hard to really kind of see that full footprint uh, until we ran across Vesa. Well, what, what are some of the challenges that come with managing a multi-cloud environment that, that were created for you and your team as part of this journey? Well, I mean, just the scale, right? We, we have just tons of apps running in the cloud, different permissions across them, different, uh, I mean, you mentioned earlier the service accounts and, and being able to understand that sort of complexity and what identities and what permissions um, that they should have in each of these systems. I mean, it gets super complex. And then you also kind of get to the point where you have these siloed views where some systems do a good job for their stuff, but whenever they need to like cross pollinate or share data across, that maybe they don't do a good job of that. Um, and really we needed a way to be able to see this, like all of it, not just focus on like one siloed system, be able to see it across all of our systems. Yeah, Choice, Choice started working with Vesa pretty early. Actually, we were, we were still in stealth mode at the time. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, your decision to go with Vesa. How, how did you get there? Well, honestly, I've been looking for something like this for a very long time. I mean, managing permissions is always something that I've had to do at my different roles. Um, and then, you know, really finding something like Visa kind of came out of uh, nowhere. And so the, the really the aha moment was when we were in the demo and I, and I, and I saw what was possible and, and how you could actually see all the identities across all the systems. Um, like I had never seen that before. And, and frankly, it was, it was pretty astounding. That's awesome. Um, so you're actually about to hit your, your one year anniversary with Vesa. Um, how are you using us today versus how you started? And you know, how has Vesa impacted that data security strategy? Yeah, I mean, you know, we originally started just really talking about AWS um, and figuring out just across our AWS footprint, you know, what things needed to be cleaned up, what what things needed to be simplified, right? Sometimes when you go into the cloud, you're you're fixing and doing all these things, but then you're not really coming at it with the strategy. And so really our overall strategy is least privilege. And so the number one thing we've been doing is trying to, you know, 
lower that blast radius and make it, you know, really tight when it turns to permissions and who should have access to what. And then, you know, audit is always important, um, especially um, a company of our size. And so we wanted to make sure that we are managing our authorization and we're meeting the needs of our various compliance regimes. Um, and we wanted to be able to, to, you know, accelerate the adoption of other cloud tools. So our SaaS platforms, right? Um, just not just the identity within uh, Vesa, or excuse me, within um, Okta. It's our identity across all of our platforms, all of our SaaS platforms. So we've started to do more and more of that where we're looking at the auth as it goes from Okta to AWS to things, from Okta to Salesforce to the data within Salesforce um, and, and any of the other systems we have, uh, in, including like things like Bitbucket for our software developers. Um, if there's anything that I've learned over the years, it's, it's not just that you're trying to secure the data uh, from third-party threats. I mean, sometimes those <laughs> threats, unfortunately, can come from in, in-house, and you want to go ahead and make sure that that isn't happening either. So that's awesome. I mean, you're, you're in a, you're a fast-moving industry, right? So your data security strategy, it sounds like, hasn't actually slowed down the business. It sounds like it's actually enabled it to move a little, a little bit faster. Yeah, I definitely say so. I mean, we've we've recently, you know, migrated to Okta for some of our applications and, you know, pushing that sort of an adoption onto our franchisees is not necessarily easy. And and we actually were struggling. We had one app in, in um, Okta and, you know, the adoption from the franchisees really wasn't that good because they I just really can't say why, but it wasn't. And what we found, though, was once we had Vesa, we could show uh, all of our customer service reps and so forth who has access to what, and whether or not they, you know, the different franchisee franchisees had actually accessed, you know, Okta and the app. And now that they knew this data, when someone would call in, so a franchisee would call in, they could say, "Hey, I noticed you guys haven't signed up for, you know, Okta yet. Here's, hey, maybe I can help you do that." So it's a drove adoption, which honestly, without that visibility from Vesa, I don't know that we could have, you know, kept pushing the boundaries. That's great. Um, shifting gears, uh, you know, the last few years have been interesting for all of us for many reasons. Um, Choice uh, Choice Hotels has had massive growth um, in record financials the last few years, um, including some pretty big acquisitions. Um, tell us about how managing and securing data uh, during an MA, M&A activity, like how does that impact your data strategy when you're in the middle of an M- a large M&A activity? Yeah, I mean, we just recently uh, purchased the Radisson Hotels Americas group, really nine brands and approximately 67,000 rooms um, in the U.S., Canada, Latin America and the Caribbean. And, you know, being able to ensure that that data um, is in good shape and that we're not going to have a breach is important. Right. So our industry has had these big mergers in the past and you know, one of our competitors swallowed another one and they actually had a really big, you know, data breach a few years back. So being able to understand where that identity is right away and make sure the right controls are in place. So what identity providers do they have? How many different identities, the different types, what kind of frameworks of permissioning um, exist in their portfolio, you know, in their portfolio before we even try to start, you know, essentially combining the two companies. It's been really helpful to, to see Hey, were they doing a really good job with their their identity or not? Yeah, building that consumer trust with your brand is is paramount. Um, how do you demonstrate to your customers that you're keeping their data secure? Uh, like, what industry best practices and compliance frameworks are important for choice? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, number one, right off the top, are, the, are just kind of like the core frameworks. You know, PCI because we take credit cards. You know, GDPR and CCPA are the kind of the privacy ones, and then. Of course, we're a public company, so SOX matters. Those really are the four key ones. So, I mean, I think from a customer perspective, we take their privacy, you know, serious. That's GDPR and CCPA. And then, you know, the PCI, everyone wants their credit card secure. So really, Vesa has, you know, kind of already allowed us to effectively ensure that those compliance checks are happening. And we're able to make sure that, uh, you know, everything's certified. In fact, that is one of our, you know, next couple steps here is to figure out how to leverage, you know, Vesa's governance frameworks to be able to actually do this within the tool. And then eventually get to this idea of kind of, of, of continuous compliance where, you know, not only are, are we actually uh, checking the data on a quarterly basis, but 
you know, for a PCI environment, like we put a monitor and an alert in there if that changes. So if there's any, you know, identity changes to the PCI environment, an alarm goes off so that people can check, was that actually good to go? Was that supposed to happen? And if it was, awesome. If it wasn't, now I can quickly remediate it. I'm not waiting around um, for an audit to come by to, to point a hole and you know, to poke a hole in my you know, process. Yeah, you know, many in the industry are, are, are still treating that compliance exercise as really a, a, a check the box exercise. Um, but the, the approach you just outlined, it's really, you're trying to push the industry forward and say, you know, the way that we certify access should be different than the way it's done today. Um, so when you talk about those compliance frameworks and regulations, you know, um, how, how do you, so how do you plan on using uh, like VESA to, to, to drive that change in the industry? Yeah, I think it's because we can do this kind of a continuous approach where we're kind of keeping an eye on it. And, and in, in today's environment, like without VESA, it's really hard, right? How are you going to keep track of all of those different identity providers and all the data that's connected to it, right? So it would be super manual and it's complex. And that's why, frankly, it's, 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 it's quarterly or annual, right? And so now if we're actually monitoring it and, and we're keeping an eye on it, so we kind of get ourselves clean then from then on, it's just a continuous process that if if something changes, then alarms fire off and you can fix it. And so really, to me, this should be the best practice. I mean, we talk about this is idea of zero trust and uh, least privilege. Well, now you can implement that and then ensure that you're continuing to do it, right? There's always going to be some like drift. And if you're not on top of it, you're going to drift really far out of the way. That's awesome, Jason. Jason, you know, thank you so much for your time again. I really appreciate it. You know, uh, it, it's great to hear about, you know, the journey, how you got here um, and where you're planning on go next and, and uh, you know, how we can hopefully work together to change to, to change the industry and, and drive change through through how these certification and access reviews and auto, auto checks are done today. So thank you so much, Jason. I, I really appreciate you bet, it. Mike. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. I really enjoyed this conversation and getting to hear how VESA has enabled choice to better manage and control securing their data. If you would like to learn more about VESA and how you can leverage the power of authorization to manage and control who can and should take what action on what data, please reach out and, uh, to sales at VESA.com or schedule a demo on VESA.com. Thanks.